A descendant of slaves, Sarah Rector earned a parcel of land that made her so wealthy the state of Oklahoma declared her white. Tribes such as the Creek and Muscogee brought their slaves with them during the relocation. After the Civil War, these slaves became freedmen with tribal rights. Among the Creek freedmen were Benjamin and Molly McQueen, the grandparents of Sarah Rector. The 1866 treaty between the United States government and five Native American tribes awarded each freedman, adults and children alike, 160 acres. Sarah's arid and rocky land was 60 miles from where she lived and unsuitable for farming. Sarah's father Joseph tried to sell it in 1910, but the sale wasn't permitted even after he tried petitioning the courts. Since the land was distributed as part of the treaty, they were stuck with it and its $30 annual property tax. In 1911, Joseph leased the land to the Standard Oil Company. Two years later, an independent driller struck oil. The property gushed 2,500 barrels per day. The land began to earn $300 a day and $112,000 a year. Today, that's roughly $7,500 a day and $3 million a year. Sarah Rector was instantly a millionaire. In 1914, at only 12 years old, she paid more income taxes than anyone else in the state of Oklahoma. The country's most influential black newspaper, the Chicago Defender, reported that the white citizens were so uncomfortable with a wealthy black person that they had to deem her white. The state asserted that the decision was necessary in order to skirt Jim Crow laws. But saying that the young girl was white wasn't good enough for the men in charge. As was common with any Native American or black person with some amount of wealth living in Indian territory, the state assigned her a well-respected and, of course, white guardian to oversee her assets. News of her stories spread around the world, bringing several people looking for money and even to marry the 12-year-old. After reading in the Chicago Defender the more accurate reports that she was dressed in rags and living in a shanty while her corrupt white guardian mismanaged her funds, W.E.B. Du Bois and the NAACP worked with the U.S. Children's Bureau and Bureau of Indian Affairs to rectify the situation and to make sure it would never happen to any other black child. Meanwhile, Booker T. Washington enrolled her in his Tuskegee Institute boarding school. She graduated at 18 and moved to Kansas City, Missouri, where she bought 2,000 acres and a home, known today as the Rector House or Rector Mansion. When she was 20, she married Kenneth Campbell. They had three sons and lived in unapologetic luxury, helping the community and blazing trails by opening only the second black-owned auto dealership in the country. By simple luck, Sarah Rector climbed from the granddaughter of slaves to the richest person in Oklahoma. And no matter how much the people around her tried to change or control her, she molded herself into a strong, rich black woman. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more of history's weirdness that you won't find in your textbooks. All those textbooks that you had to give back. No one has their textbooks anymore, right? I don't have mine. Anyway, there's this video here. There's this one here. There's more stuff here. There's more good stuff. If you liked it, stick around.